If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites according to a recent Indeed survey. With Indeed, everything hiring is all in one place and it makes it so easy. Leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences each each day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. The more you use Indeed, the better it gets. Join the more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash podcast. Just go to Indeed.com slash podcast right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Terms and conditions apply. Indeed.com slash podcast. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Welcome to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast, a brilliant true crime podcast hosted by two zany sisters, all while baking up delicious treats in their kitchen. Here are your podcast hosts, Karen Devaney and Ann Varner. Yes, indeed. We're here. We're here, and we're here. Happy. <laughs> we're here. We made it. We we had a start and stop last night where we were going to record, and then we had some technical issues. Yeah. So we could not record. Um, right. Good news is I went ahead and made what I'm baking last <laughs> night. So. Well, you had already started it. So it only made sense for you to continue baking it. Yes, and it's not <laughs> the type of thing that you can stop and restart. Not so. at all. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> it's all done, but I'm not letting us taste it until the end. Oh, I agree. Yeah. We have to keep some type of structure in our lives. Really? That's right. Welcome back to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. And I'm Karen Devaney. And I'm Ann Warner. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Still. Yeah. It's crazy. And happy birthday. <gasps> yes. Today is my birthday. Today, while whilst we are recording, it's your birthday. It is. It is. And for whatever so. reason, we've opted not to drink. I don't, I don't know why. Um, I don't either. It never even came up. No, it didn't. Whatever. Good news. There's liquor in the cake. There is liquor in the cake. <laughs> Let me talk to you about this cake. I'll t- I'll tell you right away. This recipe came from a newspaper. I do not know which one. I do not know. <laughs> All I have is a white piece of paper with a teeny tiny clip out of a newspaper, and the name is Brandied Apple Cake. Which is really all that matters. That's all that matters. It's a brandied apple cake. What else do you need to know? Nothing. You make up a cake and it turns out to be a really dense cake. There's no butter. It's vegetable oil is your oil in there. It's got three eggs, some flour, cinnamon, nutmeg, your typical kind of apple cake, like a yummy apple cake. Like an apple spicy. And then you put in two cups of finely chopped pared apples. I actually peel mine. I do not like I don't apples like with the peel, peel on. on. No. There was one, we went somewhere one time and they did have the peel on the apple, but it was cooked so well, you couldn't really taste that there was a peel on the apple. And I appreciated that. And then you can put some pecans in there or raisins. You can do raisins in there. I didn't want raisins. So I did some chopped pecans. I like that. And I toasted my pecans well before I chopped them and put them in. That's so smart. Gives an extra flavor. So you cook this cake. It takes an hour and 10 minutes to cook. So it's like a pound cake almost. It's a low and slow. A low and slow. That's right. 325 for an hour and 10 minutes. Then you're going to pull that cake out and set it to, to cool on the counter or wherever you in the pan for 10 minutes. Okay. okay? While it's cooling... You make up this amazing sauce. It's got a half a cup of apple brandy, a half a cup of apple juice, a quarter of a cup of brown sugar, and two tablespoons of butter. You bring all of that to a bowl and you stir it until that brown sugar is completely gone. And you drink it. You could. (laughs) You certainly could. Now you're going to take your cake out of the pan. Okay. And put it on a cooling rack. You can take a fork and you're going to poke, 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 poke all around that cake. And I made mine in a bunt pan. You can make it in a 10-inch tube if you want. Last time I used my tube pan, though, things didn't go well. (laughs) Some things leaked out of the tube, and I don't trust it anymore. No, no. (laughs) Bad things happened. So then you're going to take all of that liquid. Now, that is a lot of liquid. It is a lot. And you are going to constantly spoon it over that cake 
until it is all absorbed. You use every drop of that. Why do we do this? Why? Every single time, every time, every time we, we record and Alexa's reminding us of the trash. That's because we record around the time it's time to put out the trash. I guess. And so. then we never think of it. We mm-hmm. never think. No, anyway. I think it's just, we just know that she's part of the podcast. She is. Just like Trout is, she is. Yeah, she and Trout are definitely in it to win it. Okay, so a lot of liquid and you you use every drop of it and it all gets absorbed into oh that yummy, God. yummy cake. Mm, yummy. <laughs> so, And I would imagine if a cake got dried out, you could just whip up a little bit more of that sauce. And I can't imagine right how it would. You'd have to leave it out in the desert Very sun true. for a day. Very true. <laughs> well, if you live in a desert and you accidentally leave it in the car. The nice thing about this cake is it will it will keep indefinitely if you put it in an airtight container in your refrigerator. Because of the alcohol. (laughs) (laughs) It's like pickling. Exactly. (laughs) What a wonderful recipe. I love it. It sounds yummy. I can't wait to try it. And my house still smells It's so so fragrant when you walk in. You can definitely tell it's apple brandy. Like it's not just apple. Yeah. It's got like a little apple kick. Yeah. And I use some sort of a cosmic something or other apple because they were on sale. Mm -hmm. I tasted it. It's it's kind of like it's a mix between a Granny Smith and a Honeycrisp. Okay, good. Yummy. That's a good zone. Yeah. While I'm uh, sitting here not making my cake, what will you be doing? (laughs) Well, I'll still be talking about a murder. Maybe while you're talking, I'll make myself a bourbon. I mean, have at it. It's your birthday. That's true. So I have a murder case to talk to you about, and I'm going to take you back to um, May 2002 in Bonham, Texas. Bonham, Texas. Bonham, Texas is in Fannin County, Texas. Okay. In the 2002 census, it it listed that Bonham had about 10,000, maybe 10,500 people. Okay. It's 12 miles from Bonham to the Oklahoma border. Okay. And there is a... There's a picture. Yeah. And there's a Lake Bonham there. There's a Red River there. I mean, it's a, it's a, seems to be a really pretty place. And I'm going to talk to you about the case of Jennifer Harris. Okay. May, 2002, Mother's Day. 28 year old Jennifer Harris set out to visit her friend in the evening. Her friend's name is Christy Farr. It was a rainy night. There were a couple of friends over at Christy's place. Jennifer went over. They were cutting out recipe. Let me do the girl things. Right. Cutting out recipes. Probably drank a little bit of wine. Maybe I don't know about the wine, but just having like girl talk, girl chats. And around eight o'clock in the evening, Jennifer hops up and says, "I got to go. I have somebody I'm meeting." Oh. She gets in her green jeep and she leaves. She didn't tell Christy where she was going or who she was meeting, but that's the last time Christy ever saw her friend alive again. That's weird. I mean, I would be like, uh, what? You're doing what now? <laughs> Who are you meeting? <laughs> Where are you meeting? Like, I need all yeah. the deets. How about, you can't uh, leave. No, bitch, you're not leaving because you have plans with me. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I think this was a casual thing. Or here, I don't think I'll go a, with you. Or I don't know. I don't know. No, I don't. don't know. If you're sitting having girl night with me, don't even try that. So don't even try. She gets in her Jeep and she and she leaves. At the time, Jennifer was leading kind of a crazy life. So I don't think that Christy thought this was totally out of the norm for Jennifer to just like hop up and go, hey, I gotta go. Ah, okay. Just, she just was, she was leading a crazy life. So at the time, she was secretly seeing her ex-husband. This is Jennifer. Jennifer. His name is Rob Holman. She was seeing him on the DL because he also had a steady girlfriend. Okay. Okay. Rob and Jennifer had been high school sweethearts. And when Jennifer left home for college in Dallas, Rob followed her. And in 2001, they were married. Marriage didn't last very long. Rob really didn't like the the life that Dallas was giving them. He wanted to move back to Bonham. He liked more of the small town feel. And Jennifer was loving the big city life. She actually had gotten a master's degree in marine biology, but she had chosen a career path of massage therapy. Because we all know that marine biologists don't make a lot of money. They don't make a lot of money. And we also know that just because you go to school for a degree doesn't mean that's what you want to do for the rest of your life. Because when you're 18, 19, and 20, and you're choosing what you're going to major in, you don't know what life has to offer. Right. So you're just throwing darts at the wall and whatever sticks, you go for it. And then you get out of college and the world greets you with all these other opportunities. And then you think that's not what I want to do with my life. Right. So she kind of 
made a left turn, went to massage therapist school and started becoming or started being a massage therapist. Nice. Yes. And if later she wanted to go back into marine biology, she could do massages for dolphins, I, whales, I completely agree. Sharks, all any different type kinds. of marine animal that is rehabilitating. Yes. Like a sea turtle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. That would be hard, the massage on the hard shell, but whatever. Okay. It's still a massage. Okay. All right. All right. That's let's fine. just don't let's don't talk uh, about things we don't understand. Well, <laughs> Okay. Okay. I'm just saying. Got you don't know. No. There could be a whole career path out there for that. I, and they can't even find enough people to fill that career. Okay. Anyway, like I said, Jennifer loved the city life and her massage therapy career was just taken off. And this caused a little bit of a rift in their marriage. So Rob decides he's going to move home. Oh. Jennifer stays in Dallas. When Jen, As Jennifer's massage therapy career is starting to take off, she starts dating this dude named James Hamilton. Hamilton? Hamilton. James, not Alexander, but no, James. No, I clearly never said Alexander. <laughs> but, okay. At the time, James was also a massage therapist. He was living with his baby mama, and they had another baby on the way, but he also was dating Jennifer. Oh, no. There's a lot going on. James talked Jennifer into going into business with him, and they opened a massage business. Oh, okay. And that's when they became very romantically involved. That is a bad Bad idea. James ends up leaving his baby mama and moves in with Jennifer into her house. Oh, no. And he wanted marriage. He wanted marriage from Jennifer, which is confusing to me because he didn't seem to want marriage with the baby mama. He right. kept producing babies. Well, maybe she wasn't the one. Then he probably could have put a condom on it. Or maybe he did and she was poking holes in it. You don't know. I don't know. And condoms don't always work. Okay. Well, they failed twice if that's the case. There you go. So anyway, their relationship faltered when their business went under. Oh, yeah. Jennifer was in the process of declaring bankruptcy. Her life was kind of upside down. She kind of was trying to restart her life and was trying to figure out what she wanted to do. But one thing she did know was that she wanted Rob back. Yeah. So she she moved back to Bonham and she was trying to figure out what to do with her life, staying with family. And she starts dating Rob behind his girlfriend's back. Jennifer shared with Christy and with a couple other girlfriends that she thought she was pregnant mm -hmm. and she thought that the baby was Rob's baby. Okay. And she told them that she had told Rob. Oh, okay. And that they were trying to figure things out. Oh, I understand. Right. At the time, Jennifer was living with her, was staying with her grandmother in Bonham. And the next morning after Mother's Day, the following day, when grandma figured out she had not come home, she reported her missing. She called the police and reported her missing. The very next day. Very next day. Good on grandma. I know she's on it. On the same night that Jennifer had left Christie's house, a lady named Rhonda was out for her nightly walk on a deserted road, and she happened to see a green Jeep abandoned on the side of the road. Huh. She thought, you know, it happens, people break down, whatever. She didn't think anything of it until she noticed it was still there the next night. Oh, no. So she called police and reported it missing. Now police have had a Wait, call from... somebody called... Oh. Rhonda. Rhonda called. Okay. Because she found this green Jeep abandoned on the side of the road. And she called and said it was she, abandoned, not missing, but abandoned. She said it's been it's abandoned. Okay. And it's been here for two nights in a row. Gotcha. First night I didn't care. Second night I thought, mm, maybe. I'm really... A, I'm really worried for Rhonda because she and her dog take these nightly walks on this deserted road oh. every single night. Oh, Rhonda. Together in the dark. No. On a deserted road. No. Every night at the same time. i have been too scared to do that. Well, first of all, Rhonda, you need to change up your routine yes. sometimes. Yes. And I don't, I don't think it's okay for you and your dog to be out on a deserted road at night. Are you speaking to Rhonda from, in 2001, 2001, Rhonda? I am. That's the one I'm speaking to. That'll come to her in a dream, I'm sure. I, I, I hope that she feels me reaching will come out to her. Stop taking Stop doing walks. that. She's probably thinking, dude, I stopped that a long time right. ago. Right. <laughs> I stopped that in 2002. Exactly. What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. So now the police have had... Grandma called to report Jennifer missing. Now Rhonda has reported a green Jeep abandoned. They go out to look at the Jeep and they determine this is Jennifer's Jeep. But Rhonda didn't know Jennifer. Nope. She just was walking her dog. She and her dog. She had no idea she what no a great idea. thing she did. So now they know there's a, that now they consider Jennifer to be missing. You know, 
when you first report them, she's an adult. Yeah, and they're they like, could yeah, be, well, she yeah, maybe you know, could she just might be, be shocking. Not right. she could be out, you know, for a late night. But or now whatever. we got an abandoned car. Now we think, okay, we really think she's missing. The search is on to find Jennifer Harris. Police start talking to her friends, and they go to talk to James Hamilton in Dallas. Evidently, Dallas is not very far because there's a lot of back and forth to Dallas, and it's like quick. You know, it's like we're, we went to Dallas and talked to James. It's not like they had to fly somewhere. Like right, right. I feel like it's around the corner. Could be. And they also talked to Rob. So James is able to give them a solid alibi, and they were able to clear him pretty quickly. Gotcha. He had some McDonald's receipts. Oh, there you go. From Dallas. Getting him a big Mac. He was, yeah. Rob agreed to come in and talk to investigators. But he said, I'm really worried about my alibi because I really don't have anybody to back me up. Oh, no. Because I went out that night, and I was looking for some friends, and when I went to their house, they didn't answer. So I drove around by myself for about five hours just listening to some music. Oh, yeah. People do that all the time. For right. five hours. I, I, I drove the back roads. Ba- for five hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For yeah. five hours. But he was getting... But not the back road where Jennifer's Jeep is. Well, he didn't even talk all about the that. Other, all he the other He didn't even ones. talk about that. He didn't <laughs> talk about that. Since they can't clear his alibi, he agreed that he would take a polygraph. Okay. Yeah, but somehow in the chit chat, they forgot to give him the polygraph and they let him go. What? They never administered the polygraph. Oh, no. Right. Six days after Jennifer went missing, her body was found by a fisherman. She was floating in the Red River. In the Red River? Completely naked. (gasps) Oh, Jennifer. Police were called, but in the small town of Bonham, word spread very quickly. Jennifer's father, Jerry, heard from a friend that a call had gone out on the local scanner saying a woman had been found in the river. Jerry takes off, drives to the spot where the police are pulling the body out, only to find a large crowd already gathered. Oh. Spectator sport. Right. Even Jennifer's younger sister, Alyssa, had heard the news, and she went to stand on the bridge above the crowd sure, to I mean, see I what can, was happening. I get it. If, you, if it's somebody, you have a loved one that's missing and they found a body in the river, I'd go. You would. You would want to see that body be pulled out. I would want to know if it was my person. Well, as soon as they saw her beautiful, long red hair, they knew it was Jennifer. And it was just, it's sad because it's such a shocking thing to see. Oh, yeah. And again, there was this large crowd of people. Like every, it's like all these looky-loos standing around in this small town. That's, I think that, unfortunately, I think that is human nature in a small town. It is human nature in a small town. You think but, about all the traffic that we come across just for people having a looky see at a fender bender. That people, they don't even know. They don't even know, but they just want to slow down and look. But they're looking to see if they know that person. Of course they are, yeah. which is what these people are doing out by the river. I know. I just feel badly for her dad and her sister to watch this happening with all of these eyes on you and on her. And sh- she's not clothed. Like, there's no dignity. You know I what know, I'm but no people didn't go out knowing that she wasn't clothed. I understand. I'm just saying it, it was a bad situation. Yeah. So she is very... Very, very badly decomposed. Oh, oh, no. At the autopsy, the medical examiner could not even determine her cause of death, but listed it as unnatural homicidal violence. Wow. He couldn't tell if she had been strangled, if she had, he couldn't tell anything. She was very, very badly decomposed. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get to that. It was just, it was also discovered that Jennifer in the autopsy, it was discovered that Jennifer had an abdominal wound and her uterus was missing. No. Gone. Stop it right this minute. No uterus left. None. Somebody stole her uterus. It's weird. Oh my gosh. So her belongings were found upriver. They found a blouse, a bra, some jeans and her blouse. A blouse. A blouse. What else should you call it? A blouse. A shirt. A blouse. A blouse. A blouse. A blouse. A blouse. A blouse. Well, I don't know. It was a shirt with (laughs) buttons. A blouse. (laughs) Police ask Rob at this point to come back in for a polygraph. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, oh, we still have something to say. We need to do that. And he said, well, I talked to an attorney and I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, golly. Mm -hmm. Investigators go to Jennifer's grandmother's house and seize her computer to see if they can figure out who she's been talking to. And of course, everything, you know, gets checked in as evidence. Her body was then sent to Dallas, which I think, again, around the corner. Right. (laughs) Just like. Turn the corner and there's Dallas. Nearby. Mm -hmm. A forensic pathologist in Dallas took a look at the body. Okay. Because they couldn't determine 
a cause of death. And now they're trying to figure out, we feel like it, it was murder. This uterus thing has a kind of stomped. So they need a forensic pathologist. Well, that forensic pathologist comes back and says her uterus was likely removed via turtle and fish activity. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it right this minute. Please do stop it. I can't. I want, why do you tell it's, these stories? It's why? a podcast. I know, but it's like you reach down into the darkest depths of the freaking toilet and you find these obscene, horrible babies covered in flies, women's uterus eaten by turtle stories. I don't know why I do. I don't either. But I, I do. Next and they time, come to no. Me. Next time, I no. I can't help it. They come to me. Next time, you have to do something because, like... Because I'm reporting on this. I'm, re- I'm I researching got a, this and then I come across this. I and got I'm a like, head wound and died. <laughs> That's it. Head I wound and died. cold and died. God, it was murder by cold. <laughs> oh, gosh. Anyway, I don't agree with these findings. I know my opinion counts for zero, but I'm going to tell you that I have done a lot of research, really gross research <laughs> over the past 24 <laughs> hours. Oh I, and I know I'm going to have trouble sleeping tonight because I accidentally saw pictures today. I didn't <gasps> want to see. No. The case goes cold. They can't. Well, sure. Oh my gosh, there's there can't be any evidence. We have no on evidence. Body. Okay, and and in the meantime, unless there was something on her blouse. Well, here's what happened. So several sheriffs have come and gone. Investigators have retired. The case is unsolved. It's never forgotten. It's talked about all the time because when new sheriffs start running for office, they bring up the Jennifer Harris case and say, "I'm going to solve this," right? Because it haunts this entire town. Sure. Jerry, the father, and Alyssa, and Alyssa married this really awesome dude who is a who's a Alyssa is the sister yes the younger sister and she married this guy who's a filmmaker oh right and one day she told him the story of her sister and he dropped all of his projects and he started filming an investigative documentary on this case that's right did we watch something about this on tv it Mm, I don't know. Yeah, it's ringing a bell in the back of my head somewhere. Okay. They worked tirelessly to keep her in the news, her name, her face. They wanted a priority in the sheriff's department. But it, at some point in the shuffling of personnel, the evidence is lost. The physical evidence. The reports are there. The reports, it seems like there's copy of the same report over and over again. It's a very thin file. Yeah, it's, but how are you going to get anywhere if you've lost your physical evidence? Exactly. They thought that the physical evidence had been stored in a like a pod thing out outside because oh, that's okay. where they store a lot of stuff. And there had been some water damage. Oh, man. And so they thought maybe it had gotten water damaged or something. They couldn't find it. Two sheriffs later, they find the evidence. No way. They found it? In the evidence room in the police department, but it's in there. Just, it's not, it, there's no chain of custody attached oh, to gotcha. it. Oh, gotcha. So it's there, but it's useless. Well, is it useless today? I don't think it's useless. Well, I don't know. It depends. Because was it bagged and sealed or the, was it just laying out? For- well, here's the thing that I talked to my husband who knows some stuff about DNA. Mm-hmm. If I touch you and leave my DNA on your shirt and your son comes and touches you in the same place I touched you and leaves his DNA. It doesn't change my DNA. It used to be that they could, they would say, oh, there's two DNAs in there. We can't pull them apart. Today, we can pull them apart. But you don't know when they were touched. You're right. So, and they could do the MVAC, which really goes in there and vacuums those fibers where skin cells could be in the in her like strap of her bra. Right. I don't know where that evidence is right now. I can't find anything after 2019 Mm -hmm. on this case. Mm -hmm. I've emailed a couple of people. They haven't returned my emails. I don't know. I know that it is, it's cold. 48 hours did something on it. There's a TV show called cold case. They were supposed to do something on it. They, they pulled out several times. I don't know why they keep pulling out. And not doing it, but they haven't. What does that say? I don't know. I can't read it. Okay. The night that she went missing, Mm -hmm. I I failed to mention that ironically, that same night that she went missing, there was a old keeper's cottage near this river. Oh, okay. And that it was a it was kind of an abandoned cottage. Well, that night that she went missing, it burned to the ground. Oh. And a lot of investigators think 
that she met her person that she was going to meet at this cottage. It was oh. kind of a popular place for couples to meet. Right. And she thinks that, that that's where she probably died. Not far from that keeper's cottage is where they found her physical evidence. Her okay. Like clothing, her blouse. Her blouse. <laughs> also near that, there is this, um, on the bottom of this river is a blue clay. It's a blue marl. Clay. Really? Interesting. And it's there, it's there in one other spot in the river. And she had this on her face and I think on her chest mm-hmm. where she probably had scraped the bottom of this river, mm-hmm. even though she was found down river. Okay. They think that's her point of entry, which it's very close to this cottage, which burned down. So they think this cottage has something to do with it. Right. They have had private investigators that have gone and just scoured the grounds of where this, the ruins are of the cottage. There's nothing left but the scenic slab. Right. But they found nothing. They have found absolutely nothing. Wow. It's just, it's really sad because it's like, there's just, they're lacking in evidence. So anyway, I wanted to point that out because that's where they think that she met her fate. At this point, there is a investigative team called Red Rabbit Justice. Oh, Red Rabbit Justice. Yes. And they have taken over her case Mm -hmm. as far as they're kind of the keeper of the information, that kind of stuff. I think there's at least one deputy that retired from the sheriff's department that now works for them as a private eye. Nice. Really dedicated. They're completely dedicated to her case. The reward money is now at $100,000. So this is an open case, not solved. It's open. It's not solved. It is considered a cold case because they just don't have any evidence unless they're doing something with this evidence. And the last thing I saw was a press release saying the sheriff's department does have this evidence, but actually I think one of the PIs has the evidence, but the department of public safety has to request a DNA, a new DNA technology test. Right. I don't think that they've done it. Those things are really expensive. Those things I mean, like to do that MVAC, Mm -hmm. to send it off of that MVAC, it's like $30,000 for a piece of one piece of clothing to go through one time. I mean, it's in these small town departments, they don't have that kind of money. Yeah. And people don't, don't think about the cost. It's not free. You think, oh, it got sent to a lab. That's free. Right. No, it's all, it's got to be budgeted account, you know. You have to think about where that money comes from and that budget is from this tiny little town. Yeah. And they don't have the resources. They don't. So the reward is up to a hundred thousand. I'm wondering why can't they try to do a fundraiser? There there is a GoFundMe page. No, I'm sorry. There's a PayPal account that this Red Rabbit Justice has. Uh-huh. If you want to donate to get in because they're trying to get her the reward money up to two hundred and fifty thousand. Right. They're trying to entice somebody to come forward. Sure. I think that the person that did it is not gonna come forward on their own. And I don't think anybody else knows because oh, I don't think they've said it. Somebody knows. You think so? Somebody always knows. I guess. I mean, people do. That's talk. a hard secret to keep. And it is hard. It's a hard secret to keep, but in a small town, I don't know. I think it's easier to keep it in a small town. Yeah. And it could be that the person has since passed on. It could be or there's so many away. things. Right. And they're not even in town. I don't know. It's just so unfortunate. The family needs closure and Yes. Yeah. And then this whole, this whole, the turtles ate her uterus. I looked it up and <laughs> <laughs> they turtles and fish do feed on, on your soft tissue. Right. But that for, and she was in that river six days and moving. Okay. She's right. not like just, it's not a pond. So it's six days. So that turtle is going to have to also be moving with her while chewing through her entire abdominal cavity and into her uterus. Like, well, you don't know how lot. long, how deep was that? She had a wound right on her abdomen. Yeah. And the wound went right. I mean, it was right through. Right. But so the first medical examiner felt like somebody had cut her open and removed her uterus. The second guy said, Nobody cut her open. It was just turtles and fish. Right. I think somebody cut her open and maybe the turtle and the fish cleaned her out. Right. But there's no way that they're going to eat through that body. Right. This is a river. We're not talking about sharks. Like <laughs> we're, there are no piranhas and there are no sharks. Right. In this river. No, no. I understand what so you're saying. Turtle, and it was only six days. Six days. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't, I don't know how these things work. I don't either. But my husband told me I should call the pathologist here at the medical examiner's office in downtown Charleston and ask them how long does it take? How 
how long would it take for fish and turtles to eat through a body from the outside to into the organs? Because they should know. Why would they only take her uterus? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. And the only thing my husband could come up with was maybe they were after her eggs. And I was like, well, no, like that doesn't mean none of you mean the turtles. Why would the turtles? Yeah, no, I don't understand. They were feeding off the eggs. He was he was just trying grasping. Like this is the only thing I can think of. I mean, I was trying to. He kept falling asleep last night, and I would wake him up and ask him another question he's like you have got to start watching something funny on tv before we go to bed so that you are not consumed by this because this is like there's no way there's no way i don't believe it right i don't believe it yeah i tried to find pictures of her as she was brought out of the water because I wanted to see had they eaten her face like what did they eat off of her was it did they just attack right there like isn't that odd like did they eat her eyeballs out that'd be the first place they would go that's the easiest thing to eat yeah so I don't know but I saw some pretty nasty pictures that I can't unsee now so but god almighty I'm just telling you, this Jennifer Harris case needs to be solved. I feel like you need a big old bowl of spaghetti and meatballs right now. (laughs) I don't like spaghetti and meatballs, so good try. I would take beef stroganoff, though. But anyway, that's my story of Jennifer Harris. God rest her soul. She was only 28 years old. And when you see the pictures of her, she was stunning. Oh. Just red. You'll her picture will look very familiar to you. Right. She had big brown eyes and this gorgeous curly red hair that was just a mop of curls. It was and she just was beautiful, freckles and gorgeous. Mm. And I'm not saying ugly people don't I mean they don't deserve to die either. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I'm ugly, really glad that you're yeah, not. I mean, that I, because ugly that people would be don't bad. deserve to be murdered either. <laughs> I just want you to know. But just when you see these pictures, it just makes my heart ache because she was just young and and just trying to figure out her life, and somebody that she trusted murdered her. Right. Yeah. Or yeah, maybe. I don't know. I've got a, I've got a few theories. I got a few theories. It could be you know if she was pregnant that maybe the dude did it, but. I'm leaning more toward the ex-girlfriend. Okay. So they found when they went to to get her laptop, they found in her wastebasket in her bathroom, several pregnancy test things. They wouldn't say if they were negative or positive. But it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter whether or not she was pregnant. It doesn't matter what ma- it could be. If the girlfriend found out. found out that she was pregnant, she was like, "Uh, uh-uh, no, he left me for you. I'm taking your your baby, and I'm going to just take everything." Could be that could and be. And they never a considered theory. her. Well, they they as never a, considered a, her. They never considered her as a suspect. She would have been the first one I would have suspected. Me too. And they also so this one PI that used to be a. A deputy, a sheriff's deputy on Mother's Day, he just happened to stop by where Rob was. Mm -hmm. So it's a small town. Everybody knows where everybody lives. And he had some pictures he had found of um, from high school of Jennifer and Jennifer and Rob together and all this kind of stuff. And he just happened to take them with him to go see Rob. Oh. And he had, there was a picture. Jennifer was a, she loved the water. She was a swimmer. Mm Mm-hmm. And there was a picture of her like swimming in a lake. And he, so he put the pictures down and said, I thought you might want to reminisce a little bit about Jennifer to Rob. And Rob gets to that picture of her in the water and stops. Oh. And this PI, he's a private investigator now. No, at the time he was still a deputy because he said, Rob said to him as the guy was leaving, I think I, I think I want to talk to you. I think I want to, I'd like to sit down and talk. Can I talk to you? I have something to say. Oh. And the guy in his brain thought, I need to get this on recording. Oh. So he said, come down to the station tomorrow and we'll talk. No. And when he came down, he had an attorney and he said nothing. Yeah. And Rob had admitted to this guy in a private conversation that he knew that Jennifer was pregnant and that she thought it was Rob's. Right. When he got to the station with the attorney, he denied that conversation. Oh no. And this guy, when he was interviewed was in tears. Cause he said, I think I could have, I almost solved this case Aww. and I was trying to be professional and I should have just let him talk. So maybe it was like a, they met up and it, it went bad. Well, they, he went to his house to visit. No, no, no. I mean, oh, the events of that night. Exactly. Maybe that's something that happened. Yeah. I think a lot of people in the town feel like it's Rob, but they've never proven that. Right. They've not proven one way or the other. So 
I mean, he remains probably their prom suspect. God, that is a long time to live being the prom I suspect. I know. So if murder. I'm the one, if I didn't do it, I would have cleared my name a long time oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which makes me wonder why he won't. Right. I don't know. I just don't know. I don't either, but. That is a sad, sad story, Sugar. It is. It's a sad story with a missing uterus. It is. It's, it's, it has kept me up at night. It, it's one that probably will keep me up at night for a while. Yeah, so. I have no doubt. So anyway, I'm hoping that your murder is a light, a lot lighter and maybe <laughs> funny. Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. Because that's usually what you ask for from me. Yes, it, it is indeed. Okay. So do you want to take a break? Yeah, sure. We could take a break. Okay. Well, let's pause. Hold on, guys, and listen to this promotion. Promotion. Yeah, it's a promotion. A promotion. <laughs> promotion. Oh my God. Just (laughs) listen to this promo from a fellow podcaster. Hello everyone. This is Brendan from the Unchefed podcast. Each week on Unchefed, we unpack a topic regarding the politics and history of our plates in the hope of becoming better eaters. That's Unchefed, available now on your preferred podcast network. What's more important than peace of mind? Nothing. And that's what NordVPN is here for, to give you peace of mind while you're online. And with all the threats that you face today on the internet, it's more important than ever to be sure that you have the best VPN you can get. NordVPN is the world's best VPN service, offering the fastest connectivity, most servers, and next-gen encryption to make sure that everything you do online stays secure. Plus, you can use NordVPN on all of your computers and devices, no matter the operating system. With NordVPN's unlimited bandwidth, you never have to worry about a slow connection either. And plans start under $4 per month. So grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash believe or use the code believe, that's B-L-E-A-V, to get up to 70% off your NordVPN plan plus one additional month for free. It's also risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Gosh, my skin gets so dry in the winter, I feel like a sponge out of water. Girl, you need to check out Whey. Whey Melrose Place Body Cream quenches your thirsty skin and leaves it feeling satin smooth. It's fast absorbing, so it nourishes your skin when you need it most. That sounds amazing. What kind of ingredients are in Whey? Whey uses high quality nourishing ingredients like squalene, coconut oil, and kapua su butter. Wow, I can't wait to check it out. Experience the new Way Melrose Place Body Cream and Body Cleanser. Your body, your way. Go to T H E O U A I dot com and use code B L E A V to get 15% off your entire purchase. That's 15% off your entire order. T H E O U A I dot com. Code Believe. We're back. Yes, indeed. And whilst we were on a break, there has been much debate about the word. Blouse. Yes. So Anne thinks that she says blouse, and I think that's dumb. It's hard to remember what I call it because it's (laughs) such an outdated term. I don't think it's outdated. (laughs) Outdated? (laughs) I don't wonder you're calling it a blouse. (laughs) No. If you go on Dress Barn and you go online to look at their tops, one of their one of their categories is blouse. It really is. It's blouse. And you don't say house or mouse or louse. You say house, mouse, and louse. So it's a blouse. (laughs) And it's not an old-fashioned term. It just seems old-fashioned. I don't know. It struck me as old-fashioned. Gosh, it's not old-fashioned. You need to get with it. Blouse is in. Go get your grandma's blouse. (laughs) With the ivory buttons on it. A blouse buttons all the way down. All right. A well, shirt. It's also a dress shirt. No, it's not. That's a man term. Yes. Well, men don't wear blouses. But you said it's a shirt that buttons all the way down. For a woman. You didn't say that. Oh, my gosh. Well, the girl was wearing a woman's blouse. Well, she wasn't because she was found At naked. At some point in the night, she must have had it on you. <laughs> it's my birthday. You be nice. Okay, well, I'm getting you a blouse for your birthday. (laughs) It'll be lavender with pink buttons. Fantastic. Yep, and you will wear it all the time. And you'll say, thank you, my sister gave me this blouse. Yes. Where did you get your blouse? And you'll say, my sister, my dear sister. My dear sister gave me (laughs) this blouse. (laughs) 
my name. Please Please let us know if y'all say blouse or blouse. No, don't. I don't want to know. I want to know. This inquiry. 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 We're on a whole new topic. Okay, give me your murder. I can't take it anymore. I can't take you anymore. (laughs) (laughs) This is going to be, you have to pay attention. Pay attention. (laughs) Okay. There are two Terry's in this story. Oh, my God. You always get the confusing ones. But I'm going to make it easy. I'm going to call the girl one Terry Ann. Okay. Her name was Terry Ann, but I don't know if people called her Terry Ann or not. I think they just called her Terry. Okay. But for the purpose of this story, I'm calling her Terry Ann. Okay. And her daddy's name is Terry. Can we call him Terry? Terry. <laughs> I don't think so. Terry and Terry? No. No? It's Terry Ann and Terry. Okay. Okay. So we got Terry Ann. Terry Ann and Terry Mann. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm here for you. Yeah, but no. <laughs> so Terry Ann McCoy and her wife, Tara McCoy, lived in, I think, Newark, New Jersey. There are some reports that indicated maybe perhaps somewhere in Delaware. I could never They're get very, right. very close together. But it was uh, court documents that one place said New Jersey and another place said Delaware. So... What do you do with that? Well, I'm confused about Terry and Tara. Well, <laughs> yes. Yes. There's a Terry and a Tara and also a Terry. A Terry man. <laughs> but then there's a Geraldine. So you're good. Oh, and that could have been a Jerry. <laughs> yes. She could have gone oh, gosh. by Terry. Yes. Whoa. This is quite the clan. And we haven't even started the story. I know. I'm confused. <laughs> All right. Anywho, they left their home, either in New Jersey or Delaware, in November of 2009 to go visit Terry Ann's parents. Terry, her daddy, who was 63, and Geraldine, her mama, who was 60. Terry and two. Terry. I think 62. <laughs> you can't really read your writing. No. And they had a beautiful farmhouse in Chesapeake City, Maryland. I do know for sure they I lived know in where Maryland. That is. Beautiful country. It's gorgeous. During the early morning hours of November 4th, Terry Mann, <laughs> Geraldine, Terry Ann, and Tara Lord have mercy. were all sleeping. Terry Mann was awakened by a thumping noise. It's not funny. Terry Mann mm-hmm. and Geraldine were on the first floor of the house, and Terry Ann and Tara were on the second floor of the house. Terry Ann had been having some health problems, so Terry was concerned that maybe she had had some kind of a blood low blood sugar episode, and maybe she had fallen, and that's what he had heard. So he gets up and heads to the door, but as he approaches the door, he sees some, what they described as masked boys in the house coming toward him, and he knew that his house had been broken into. What? He quickly shuts the bedroom door, and he holds it closed with all of his strength, but it wasn't enough to keep the intruders out. As the masked intruders busted into the bedroom, one of them hit Terry in the eye with a gun. Three intruders were in that bedroom. One had a gun on Geraldine, and two had guns on Terry. It was a chaotic scene, and the intruders were yelling profanities and screaming, open the safe, give me all your money, open the safe, give us the money now. Terry said, you can have whatever you want, you can have whatever whatever you want. I'll open the safe, take everything. I don't care. Take it all. But he and Geraldine both said, there is no money in this house. There is no money. You can have whatever's in the safe, but there is no money in this house. What was in the safe? Well, I'm going to tell you. As Geraldine lay in her bed shaking, she never got out of bed. She stayed, they made her stay in the bed and she is trembling, shaking with fear. Two of the intruders forced Terry into the living room where there was a safe. Okay. They had Terry open the safe. Well, they must have known there was a safe. Terry again told them, take what you want. Geraldine was still shaking with fear in her bed, heard five gunshots. Oh, no. She thought Terry had been shot. She sat in agony while the intruders continued to hold her. There's one intruder holding her at gunpoint. The intruder at that point notices there's another safe in the bedroom. And he calls out to the other intruders in the other room. First off, he says, everybody okay? And they all yell back, we're good. I know. It's crazy. It just gives me chills to even think about this situation in the middle of the night. It's like one or two o'clock in the morning that this is happening. These other intruders come back to the bedroom and they have Terry. Terry had not been shot. Oh. The intruders tell Terry to open the safe, and he says, that's Geraldine's safe. I don't have the code. 
And he didn't. He did not have the code to that safe. Only so Gerald did. His and her safes. He did. That's crazy. They had his and her safes. The intruders make Terry lay on the floor. Lie? Is he going to lie on the floor or lay on the floor? He lays on the floor. Okay. He lays on the floor. That's exactly. You're right. He did. He laid on the floor <laughs> at the foot of the bed, and they hold him at gunpoint and demand Geraldine open the safe. Poor little thing. She complied, and the intruders emptied the safe. The terrifying scene ended quickly as the intruders fled with over $500,000 worth of jewelry. No, that was probably all in Geraldine's safe. But their lives had been saved, spared, not saved, spared. What they didn't know is that their beautiful daughter, Terry Ann, had heard the commotion and had come downstairs to see what was happening. As she reached the landing on the second floor, one of the masked intruders pumped five <gasps> bullets into her body. That was the shot. That was the shot. Oh, no. Terry was dying. And as a matter of fact, no, not Terry, but Terry Ann. Terry Ann was dying. And they knew this because she screamed out, I'm dying. That was nice for her to let them know. So Terry and Tara, yes. the wife, Tara had actually been hiding underneath the bed because she heard the commotion and was so scared when she heard the gunshots. Yeah, she, hit. she froze. Bless her. Once she heard the door close and the intruder is gone, mm -hmm. she rushes to Tyrion and Tyrion says, I love you, but I'm dying. Oh, my gosh. They call the police. This is horrible. The police come. The ambulance comes. They take Tyrion to the hospital in Delaware. And soon after, she is pronounced dead. Oh, now, I really wish that I had found somewhere in all of the information mm -hmm. out there how it is that the police figured out who the hell did this. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I know. They got caught, but you don't know how? I don't know. They, there was no, there, there were a lot of news articles on the arrest. There were news articles on the, the court. There, there's a story about the whole situation in the court papers, but never do they say how police actually came to the conclusion that these four assholes are the ones that did it. Okay. Now, I know that two of them fled to Florida, and they found them in Miami. Mm. And the other ones, they just found at home. They didn't go anywhere. They, they didn't want to go. They, very far they were like, home. we're just going to stay here. Like, we're not travelers. We're going to ride it out. We're not travelers. <laughs> we don't like to travel. But stay home. Nobody's going to figure out it was us. Anyway, all four got arrested. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you about these assholes. Yeah, because they're assholes. You're going to love this guy. His name is Seth Jedlicka. <laughs> Wait. Yes, yes, no. yes, yes. His last name is Jed Licker. Not her. <laughs> not, not, not. Wait, not Licker. Is his name Seth Jed Licker or Seth Jed Licker? <laughs> I don't think they have those fancy pronunciations. But <laughs> Way I can keep it straight. His last name is Jed Licka. His whole last name. Jed like Licka. His entire last Jed name. Jed Licka. J E D L I C K A. Jed Licka. That's made up. <laughs> that's a street name. <laughs> That's real. I don't think it is. I think that's his real name. It's not. Nobody on the planet has ever had that name except for this guy. <laughs> this guy right here. How can you have a last name like? Jed Lecker. Maybe he's Amish. That's the only thing I, I can think know, of. Maybe. Seth, why wouldn't it be like Jebediah? <laughs> Jebediah <laughs> Jed Lecker. <laughs> Look, exactly. you've, gotten, you've gotten the dog upset. Oh my God, this dog. Trout is upset. Trout, now. can I please feed you some chocolate? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're mean. <laughs> All right. So Seth Jedlicka was 16, 16 years old when he broke into the McCoy's home. Now, I will say that Seth didn't, I guess, maybe didn't have the money for a mask. Oh, and no. Everybody, everybody went masked no, up. No, no. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> Seth just painted his face. No, he didn't. He just painted it. He's just going to put his mask. Seth, some horrible parody. <laughs> movie like a like that movie masterminds or something. I don't know. It's just awful. I don't know that we're working with masterminds here, <laughs> but okay. My oh, God, he broke in. He's one of the four. <laughs> he just painted his face. He just painted his face. No he need did. for a mask. No. 
Is he is he one of the ones that just stayed home and didn't bother to go to Florida? You know, I can't remember. I was thinking, I, I can't get this face paint off this of my off. face. I cannot go to Florida like that. <laughs> I don't remember. I really don't remember. Oh, gosh. So he's found, he goes to court and he, he's found guilty of first degree murder. And he is sentenced to life in prison with all but 60 years suspended. All but. All but 60 years. Right. So he has to go for 60. He has to go. He can, he, let me finish. He has appealed his case saying that he was just a juvenile when the crime was committed and that he should not have gotten such a harsh penalty. He submitted a 343 page letter to the judge begging for leniency. 300. Listen, Jed Lecker. But never, not once in any of the letter does he accept responsibility for the for the robbery, the murder of Terry Ann, the permanent disfiguration of Terry because he, when he was hit in the eye with the oh, butt of yeah. the gun, he permanently lost all the vision in that eye. Wow. Right. All of his appeals have been denied. He has, the judge said he had to serve 25 years before he can come up for parole. Okay. I don't know. I, 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 I'm a, dis- I'm a disappointed about <laughs> I'm a disappointed. I'm about a disappointed Jed about some things in all of these cases. Jebediah Jed Licka. Jebediah Jed Licka. You should have gotten a lot more. A lot more than that is not a harsh sentence to me. No. Just because you're 16 doesn't mean you're not a son of a bitch. Exactly. So, you, you did an adult crime, you dumbass. Exactly. Ass. Sorry, Mama. But oh, truly. I can say ass. Oh, no. I said something else, didn't I? But yeah, I called him a son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah. A son of a bitch. <laughs> I think mama would agree on this. Yeah, I mean, come on. He terrorized the I listened to Terry Ann. No, I did not. I did not you because Terry Ann has passed. I listened to Terry and Geraldine give a an impact statement mm-hmm. at Jed Seth Jed Licka's Jebediah's <laughs> sentencing. And the way they described him, he was so aggressive and he's the one that used the most profanity and he's the one that was in their faces and he's the one that hit Terry with the butt of the gun. And there's just listening to her account of everything that happened. It's like, oh, horrifying. You should be there for much, much longer than just yeah. 25 years before you can come up for parole. I think it should have been 60. I think he should have had to serve 60 and then we'll talk about it. Yeah. Right. And then write us a 324 right. page then we'll, Let's letter talk about it after you're in for 60. Mm-hmm. The next jackass is <laughs> Carl Gladden. Jackass number two. Postals. Excuse Post- me? Postles, P-O-S-T-L-E-S. How did, how did, how did you say Okay, he's a possible. <laughs> Carl Gladden Possel. He has a hyphenated last name. Gladden Possel? Gladden <laughs> What? Where did these jokers come from? Maryland. Oh, my God. Gladden Possel? <laughs> I think they're Amish. Carl? Carl. <laughs> Carl. And it's Carl. Ooh, where is he? No, it is not. I'm not joking you. I really think they're Amish. I'm telling you. Did you see pictures of them? Yes. And are they Amish? Could be. I am looking up. I am looking up. Glad. I glad do. Possel. <laughs> glad Possel. It's Possels. Okay. With an glad S. Possels. Gladden. Gladden. Gladden Possels. Yes. Carl with the K. Carl. So he's the one that actually fired the shots that killed Tyrion. He was 20 at the time of the murder. He pled guilty to first degree murder and was sentenced to 75 to life in prison with all but 75 years. I don't even understand. What does that mean? All but 75 years. Like, let's just give them 75 freaking years. Why do we got to put all this all but shit in there? Why are we suspending things? I don't know. Why are we suspending anything? Right. Why are we suspending things? Unbelievable. Anyway, he's required to serve at least 30 years before he's eligible for parole. But still, I mean, he's in his 20s, 30 years. He comes up for parole if he's been really good, maybe even... Before then, and then he gets out. That's just, I don't know, it's just irritating. The next one is Anthony Melkor. Oh, that's pretty normal. He was 16 when he would, when he participated in the robbery. 16. Now, even though Anthony was 16, he had enough money to buy a mask. Well, maybe his parents were just a little bit more well off. Maybe, I don't know. I don't or know. perhaps he had been skiing once and, and got a mask, and he was like, I'll wear this one. I'll take this one, yeah, but... I don't have any extras that I'm not going to lend you my sister. So sorry. Well, I just don't understand sorry, what kind Seth. of paint do you put on your face? 
I bet. Where Maybe do you like get that, that camouflage paint? Really? Yeah. I don't think that's pretty expensive. Just go buy a 99 cent ski mask <laughs> at the Walmart. I don't know. He he didn't want to do that. He did. Maybe he's allergic to that material. You know, it can be very itchy. <laughs> it is very itchy. can be very itchy. Mm-hmm. Anthony. And what's this guy's name? Anthony who? Anthony Melkor. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Something just went bang. <laughs> and we're scared. Oh, goodness. <sighs> I think it. I don't know what it is. Okay. So he was 16 when it happened. He is sentenced to 10 years in prison. No. No. With five years suspended. Why are we suspending No, things? 10 years in prison with five years of supervised probation. You'll be extremely happy to know that soon after his release from prison, yep, you heard me, he was charged with sexual abuse of a minor. <laughs> Oh, well, he's just an upstanding Way citizen. Way to go, Maryland. Thank God Yay. that judge let him out Thank on the street. Thank goodness. Yes, let's get him right back out there, shall we? The last of the four jackasses, his name is Joel Milbum. Wait, Milbum. well, Milburn. Sorry, <laughs> my cursive. My print looks a lot better. I see over here. He's, okay. <laughs> he would is switch to cursive. Mil- well, I, I printed the names up top, okay. so I had a, and then my story is written out cursive because it's just gosh darn faster. He pled guilty to first degree murder. 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 <laughs> I told you I should have been drinking. Oh, we are we are having a hard time. We are, well, I am. He pled guilty to first degree murder. He was the actual planner of the robbery. Okay. Joel had worked as a pizza delivery person. And had delivered pizzas to Terry and Geraldine. All right. He assumed the McCoys were wealthy because he could see a safe in the living room when he made his deliveries. So he could see when he made the deliveries to the right. front door, he could see the safe in the living room and assumed they must be having something valuable in that they're safe. Can I just say right now publicly? Sure. I don't have a safe. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nary a safe because no. I ain't got nary a thing to put in it. No. So gosh. don't come and looking for a safe at my house. There's no safe. There's no safe. So don't look because no, I got nothing. No, and this is a good lesson for people because you don't think about these things. You have to hide your shit. Make sure that what whatever you have, the pizza people can't see it. Nope. If you have value, I mean, if I, I mean, I'm actually considering decorating my front <laughs> front room and as like a shack. Yeah, that's like, a great um, idea. Maybe so put that- some bug fake bugs on the wall so it looks like it's really dirty and dilapidated. That's a great idea. So so when you open the door for the pizza delivery, right. which you should never do, we have contactless delivery But if I now. had to, if we went back to, We're not going back. Okay. Not, I don't want to. I love that things appear on my doorstep. Me and too. I get a text. I never mm-hmm. have to see the person delivering it. They never it. have they to never see, see me. me. No, they don't have to see what I'm wearing mm-hmm. when I pick it up. <laughs> no, they're not going <laughs> to want to do that. <laughs> Yeah. It really has taken a lot of pressure so off. This guy was sentenced to 40 years in prison. And how much did he get suspended? I, he Maybe he got life and all was suspended but 40 years. It didn't give me the specifics on him for some reason. Trout, I don't know why you're so upset. Because his name is not Jebediah. It is, it is not. <laughs> and I, I really don't know why not. I don't either. I don't know that why was, I didn't name him Jebediah. That was a faux pas on your part. <laughs> I know better. <laughs> yeah. Next dog, for sure. My next dog is going to be named Blouse. Blouse and your next Blouse dog and Jebediah. Will be Jebediah. <laughs> all right. So all four of these assholes. Sorry, Mama. Are they still in jail? No. Remember the one. Dude I know making, he got out, but he went back to prison because he sexually. Uh, that was in 2019. There was no follow up story on him. I don't know if he went back to prison or not. Oh, he could be out there <clears throat> diddling little people all Here's over Maryland. Thing. I think that little person that got sexually molested by him should be able to sue the judge that let him out. I think that's true. Because when I think those that judges great. are held accountable, they're going to think twice. Maybe a tougher sentence would Perhaps have been Perhaps they were think twice about, well, if I, I, just don't understand if I give why. this person leniency and they go out and do bad things, it's going to come back to me. I might want to think about that. Yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I, I don't I'm know. Tired and I, of the again, leniency. not an attorney, so I don't know. I don't either. How it all works in Merlin, but. Yeah. Seems like we could have done a little better. I'm really surprised because I don't know. I don't know why I'm surprised. All four of them were also required to pay the McCoy family back the $500,000 Guess that what? they stole. <clears throat> the McCoys will never see that money. Oh, no, they won't see that money. I, and of course, I couldn't find anywhere whether or not if they'd the actually. If the kid cannot afford a ski mask, how is he going to give back $500,000? Right. And yeah, I mean, they're in jail. How are they going to do that? How's that going to work? Does that mean that, that what well, would have what... been really smart would be if the prison system had said, okay, 
okay, you've got to work. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, even though we only pay you 29 cents an hour, anything that you make goes to your people. Well, and I, sorry, but I think that their families' estates should have to pay them back uh, because then they'll think twice. People will think twice. If I go out and steal from somebody and go to jail, my family, my parents are going to have to pay that back. Right. So the, my parents are going to suffer from my crime. Maybe that will stop some people. So here is one good bit of information for me. I'd like to hear something I'm good sure, out of your story. I'm sure that there are other states that have the same thing, but all, you'll notice that even though only one of them actually pulled the trigger and yes. murdered, it does when you are robbing a person or persons, if a murder happens during that robbery, then you automatically Everybody who participated in the robbery gets. Yes, there are a lot the, of states that all, have that. You all get murder. Yeah. And I think the reason why that one, the, the Anthony Melkor, I think that he actually went through juvie. I don't think he went to adult. I think he did the, the term in juvie and Good. then okay. he got out on, I think, I think. When I, again, hard to find a lot of detail. The, all of the story was about this Seth Jedlicka. For some reason, people really were fascinated by why him fighting so hard. All of his appeals, I guess they're all real mad about oh, okay. the appeal. And they, you know, unfortunately he gets to do that, but I hope that he doesn't ever get out of prison. Well, he's personally. had a lot of time to write a big old fat letter. A 343 page of which letter. Not once did you say, hey, I'm sorry for wrecking these people's lives. He just, all he said was I was young and stupid and I made a mistake, but, it, but I didn't pull the trigger. That. It wasn't it me. Matter. I didn't kill her. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. And, and there are consequences. Consequences to your actions. Right. And you terrorize those people. You went there with the intent to terrorize those people. Right. And just because they have a safe doesn't mean you get to have anything no. in it. That's and what's so infuriating. And that is one of the reasons why we moved. And don't you know, <laughs> they only moved. got $30,000 yeah. When they went to pawn that jewelry. Yeah. Creeps. Creeps. Yep. Creeps. So there you go. That is the sad, sad, sad story of what went down. That is very unfortunate. And those young kids. In Chesapeake, Maryland. They could have chosen something besides what they did that day. Maybe yeah. go play a sport or go to the freaking library and read a book. Or just stay home. Just and stay home. I don't care. Stay at the freaking wall. Yeah. But you don't go try to take other people's possessions because no. they don't belong to you. And once you're there, you don't freaking terrorize the old people. No. And you don't shoot the woman coming down the steps trying to figure out who is terrorizing her parents. No. And, you know, poor Terry, he <laughs> then was disabled. Yeah. You know, he couldn't work. He couldn't do things from, he couldn't even drive for well, heaven's sake. At that point, how do you even sleep at night? Well, you don't. You don't. You don't sleep at night. You've got PTSD. Then you got to figure out that whole situation. Yep. Unfortunately, when Terry was 68, he passed away. So he is, that was in 2014. And so where is Geraldine? Geraldine's still in that area. Yeah. And now do you think she sleeps at night? No. Uh, probably not without medication. No, exactly. So very sad. Two very sad stories on my birthday. Jiminy Crickets. Jiminy Crickets. Oh, well, oh, it is a murder podcast. We are so. stress eaters. Guys. So <laughs> we are stress she eaters. She still doesn't know it's about murder. <laughs> I do know it's about murder, but my goodness. Why does it have to be so depressing? So sad. I know. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm ready let's for have cake. some cake. Why don't we go on pause? Yeah. And you'll serve us up some cake. I guess I'll serve the freaking cake because it's my birthday. Yes. That sounds like <laughs> a great idea. I mean, what better activity on your birthday? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm trying to find where my mouse is. Okay. I don't, I'm having you technical see it? issues. No. Okay. Oh, you see it now? Okay. Great. All right. Hold on, guys. We made it back. Oh my gosh. This cake looks good. And she did really good by giving me a big piece. Big piece. Big piece. Big piece. Oh. So it's a very, very moist, moist. <laughs> we don't like that word. <laughs> it's a moist blouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well what do you think of it it's so good yeah it's got lo mm. lots of apples and pecans i love it. the pecans mm -hmm. mm, you did good by toasting them thank you really brings out their flavor Thanks. their pecan in this can you taste any brandy? It's not too super strong. It has a good taste, but it's not like it doesn't have an alcohol taste. Mm -hmm. 
So, but it has a really, that glaze is really yummy. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for this week. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about a little social media. First mm-hmm. off, send us an email. Tell us mm-hmm. what you think. Mm-hmm. Tell us that you love us. Mm-hmm. Tell us that you have a story you want to tell. Tell us that you want the recipe. There's so many things. Tell you us tell you us. want some killer vanilla. Tell us you want some killer vanilla. That's right. Send us an email at murder.sugarcoated at gmail.com. That's a good idea. Thank you, Seth. (laughs) Back to you, Jeremiah. I don't know. Dear Obadiah. (laughs) Back to you, Jed. (laughs) Are you going to tell them about any other social media? We have Instagram. And we are at Sugar Coated Murder on Instagram. It's very convenient. There you go. On Twitter, we're Sugar Murder. Mm -hmm. Because I don't guess. (laughs) Somebody already had sugar-coated murder. I don't oh, know what no. happened there. It could have just been a bad day for me. <laughs> and we have Facebook. We have a regular Facebook page. And we also have a fan page. I'm talking with my hands. Y'all can't see. No, but, but I'm making I, really big sweeping motions right almost now. Almost like a Y. Huge a news. Y. This is a big y. news. A wide Y. <laughs> it's huge news. We've got Facebook. And that's all we have. We don't have anything else. <laughs> I don't think we have anything else to talk about because, mm-hmm. I don't know, we're losers. I don't... Well, because we're all talked out. Maybe it's time for somebody else to talk. Email us and let us know if you want to take over the podcast for a day. Oh, my God. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. All right. Well, you guys have a good week. We love you. Stay sweet. And don't murder. Because if you kill people, we will talk about you, Jed Licka. (laughs) Jed (laughs) Licka. We're going to talk about you. Obadiah. Obadiah. (laughs) All right, y'all. Listen, don't let Obadiah get (laughs) you. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait. Look at this on my notebook. I thought my notebook was my mouse pad. Oh, God. (laughs) Oh, God. Help me. This has been Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. A deliciously entertaining true crime podcast. Like what you heard? You can always explore past episodes by visiting sugarcoatedpod.com. Don't forget to like our Facebook fan page and share with friends. Thanks for listening to Sugar Coated Murder Podcast. Thank you for listening to Believe. You can show support to your host by subscribing to the show and giving us a five-star rating on your preferred platform. Check us out at Believe.com and search for B-L-E-A-V on YouTube.